Motivation. Motivation can come in many ways. For me, it was the sight of myself. I looked in the mirror day after day, noticing myself getting bigger, bigger, flabbier, flabbier. Unhappiness set in. And I started to ask myself, why? Why are you choosing this? Why is drinking so important? Why are cigarettes so important? Why is weed so important? Why is friends so important? Why is all that more important than how I should feel about myself? Because when I wake up in the morning, I feel like that's the time when I should feel my greatest. Refreshed, slept, good to go. But no, nighttime's more important. Drinking, smoking, chilling. One day I decided, no more. I walked to Target. I bought some $20 running shoes because I told myself, I'm not gonna invest in this until I commit to myself that I'm actually into it. Lots of people go buy $200 racing outfits, sportswear, only to fail. Go do one run, be like, that's not for me. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't wasting money, that I was actually gonna quit smoking, quit drinking, quit chilling. So I told myself, okay, I'm gonna run these shoes into the ground. And then after that happens, I'll know that I'm committed. And I'll buy more expensive shoes, better running shoes, to let myself know that wait, maybe I am into this. The months went on. Three miles here, three miles there, over and over again, two times a week. Then it became three times a week. Then I signed up for a Spartan race. Did my Spartan race. First Spartan race came in 274th in the open heat. I said, damn, out of all these people, I think 9,000 people raced. And I'm there just by doing this. And it dawned on me, I am into this. When I crossed that finish line and they put that medal around my neck, it was like, well, damn, I am Spartan. So from then on, I decided I'm gonna commit to this. Maybe I can get fast. Maybe I'm not too old. And as I trained and ran and ran and ran and ran, the weight fell off. I started to look down and I still had a pooch, a little belly. My chest looked good, my arms looked good, my legs looked good, but I had this belly. And I asked my wife, I said, man, when do you think this is gonna go away? And she says, well, it took you 15 years to get. It might take you that long to get rid of it. And that was powerful. That hit me. Damn, maybe you're right. But then again, that pushed me to work harder. Now nah, I can get rid of it. I can get rid of it. So I was still feeding off of this body image thing. I'm still losing weight. It's about losing weight. And through that transition, years passed. Race is here, race is there. Racing became my life, race season. As soon as the snow melted, it was time to get busy. And when the leaves started falling, I knew it was over. But then you just start training again. And as those years went by, it became less and less about body image. I started studying, reading Joe DeSena's book, Spartan Up, studying ancient cultures, Norse, Vikings, Spartans, Romans, these people that lived hard lives. Even my grandfather and his father. Not too long ago, they lived hard lives. Not the soft cupcake bullshit we do today. And then it dawned on me, I'm not doing this for body image no more. I'm doing this to tap into something that's still inside me that we've forgotten about in this culture. We've forgotten about our heritage. You know cells have cellular memory? They remember. That's why your passions and your wants and your needs and your desires, they all feed off of that because that's what those that came before you 
felt and struggled with and lived through. It creates your DNA, makes you who you are. So I started searching for that. I made my outward appearance show that to let everybody else know, yes, I look different. I braid my hair and half of it shaved. I have a big beard. Because I want to externally show my what I'm wearing, my heart on my sleeve, that this is who I am. Because that's what's on the inside. That's what I'm feeling. Spartan Racing taught me about what it's like to suffer. Because we're in these cubicles and boxes and 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 I'm stuck inside a hospital, my job all day. Static. Not carrying nothing, not lifting nothing. And that's how most of us live. Yeah, we got our construction dudes and, and everybody out there putting in work every day. They ain't trying to do no working out when they're done with it because they just worked out all day. Working out is work, I get paid for that. I ain't trying to do that so when I get home I drink beer. That's how a lot of them think. But what Spartan Racing did, it, it opened my mind. It's not just about a medal and a t-shirt. It's that once a year, or, or a few times a year, I get to test myself. The Vikings and, and, and Romans and Spartans, every, every year they would have these, these competitions where they would pit themselves against each other, against nature, to test themselves. And we don't do that anymore. We watch it on TV. We watch other people do that. Boxing matches, football, whatever it is. MMA. We watch someone else do it. While I eat my chicken wings and drink my beer. And I said, fuck that. I ain't living like that no more. That ain't gonna be me. Even on the days when I'm tired. I train. And some say, we might be addicted to fitness. Maybe. But that addiction's way better than what I was addicted to. At least if this kills me, I'll be on my bed. That shit was dope. The best thing, the best thrill I get out of doing this, when I run to the top of the mountain, when I'm at a Spartan race and I look out over the valleys, nobody I know, nobody I grew up with or hang out with is doing this. It's mine. And nobody can take it from you. There's no gossip about it. Oh, did you see what he did last night? None of that. It's mine. And you can't have it unless you put in the work. It takes work to hang out where I hang out. Fear will also stop you dead in your tracks. Nobody ever wants to admit fear, especially if you're a man too prideful. Some people don't want to do a Spartan race. Oh, oh, that sounds crazy. Hell yeah, it's crazy. But you know what? Your body's made for it. Millions of years of evolution made you a machine. The reason that we get so damn heavy is because back in the day, there wasn't food on command. There was no supermarket back in the day. No packaged chips canned soda, feast or famine, and that's what your brain knows. You don't eat for a while, when you do eat, it's going to store it as body fat. Work out and eat, you're going to get bigger. Back in primitive times, you might have went, shit, you might have went a month before you ate again. And then you feast and feast and feast and feast and feast, because there ain't no refrigerator. You can't save it. You might be able to salt it, smoke it, keep it for a couple months. But it's gonna run out. And you gotta get hunting. Shit, primitive man probably walked, ran 5, 10, 20 miles a day to get food. And we go so damn big because I feel hungry. I drive my ass to the store, to the Wendy's, or to the McDonald's. I don't eat that much. You eat the wrong stuff too much. Motivation can come in many forms. Looking too big. 
or a doctor telling you you got diabetes, you're going to get diabetes. Or a doctor telling you you got hypertension, high blood pressure. Motivate. Even if you're getting out walking. I'd be on the Spartan course. I see people two, sometimes 300 pounds walking that bitch just to say they did it and they finished it. Motivating. Don't get stuck by fears. Don't be obsessed with body image. Find the primitive nature that lives within you. Feed off of it. Learn about it. There's these crazy ass things, and I know they're old school. They're called libraries, and they're full of books that can teach you about your past. We walk around with phones with more technology than the space shuttle had, looking at funny cat videos all day. When you got all the information of human knowledge at your fingertips. More worried about shoes and cars and jewelry rather than what am I here for? Why do I exist? What am I capable of? When you wake up, these are the things you should focus on. Not how to get more money so I can have more stuff. You know what's going to happen? You're going to get the new stuff you want and it's going to be nice for a day or two and then you're going to need more stuff and more stuff and more stuff and if I take all that shit away you're just an unhappy person and you know it running's free besides the shoes you gotta buy maybe some cheap ass running shorts it's free it's meditation it's prayer Don't be stopped by fear. Don't be stopped by materialism. Don't be stopped by how you are. You can always change, always. I was watching the CrossFit Games. I didn't know they had a 60 plus category. Some of these dudes are 65 years old. They're putting up more weight than me. You can't stop me. I'm going for broke till I'm done. Never slipping back. And that's what you got to tell yourself. You do your first run, you get done, you sit down, or you stand and stare in the mirror and you say, never slipping back. Ain't going to happen. You get your little agenda out, your planner. You make a schedule. I'm running this day, this day, this day. I'm going to go to the gym on this day and this day. You do that shit five days a week, 90 days, create a habit, never look back. Sign your ass up for a Spartan race. Get out there and feel uncomfortable. Get dirty, scratched up, have some fun with some folks that are feeling like you. I work with teenagers dealing with drug and alcohol addiction, and I tell them all the time, you won't find none of your friends up there. I show them videos of these fitness girls working out, like, damn, she's hot. Yet you won't find her at the party. Sorry. She's got shit to do. And that's the way you need to go about it. Looking for the next best thing, coming into a new season. You know, the seasons change on the earth and you should do the same. When it's time to plant, you plant. When it's time to harvest, it's harvest. When it's time to leave it and store it, you store it. And then when it's time to get ready to do it again, you start all over. One of my favorite motivators is Bishop T.G. Jakes. And he says one of the hardest things that his mother had him do was count to 100. Because it seemed so far away from 1 to 100. But he learned, if I can just count to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All I got to do is start over. Add a 1 in front of it. Add a 2 in front of it. Add a three in front of it. You have to keep coming into the new season, but when you come into the new season, you got to start over. You're not going to know everything all the time. Learn how to count to 100. But first, you got to learn how to count to 10. 
You don't have to be great to start, but you gotta start to be great. Get out and do something. Motivate.